Hey, welcome back. As usual, we're going to get right into the process today with one change. A ton of you commented asking me to go a little slower because in the past I've time-lapsed through a lot of steps, especially when I'm like masking in Photoshop or something, and you were wondering exactly what I'm doing and asked me to explain that. So today the only edits will be, you know, when Stable Diffusion is loading a new image or I have to turn to the side, get some water, cough or whatever. Everything else will be completely unedited as we create a wonderful character art today. We're going to make a lovely little monster in the style of DreamWorks, Pixar, that kind of thing. Of course, as I've done in previous videos, I could load my own sketch into image to image, but why do that when I have friends that can illustrate really well? So today we're going to start out with an artwork by the wonderful Steffi Engel, who designed this lovely troll for us. Now, Steffi Engel might be a, uh, a term for you in Germany especially because she is the inventor of the chubby unicorn or Pummel Einhorn, which is kind of a media juggernaut nowadays. Like you can get a ton of merchandise and whatever, even audio plays about this lovely little unicorn on a site here. This is not paid advertising. She's just a very good friend who does awesome stuff. For example, create art for us. So um, might as well give something back. If you stick around till the end, she has another surprise. So stay with us. Now, let's get back to our little troll. I want to turn him into a 3D render, right? Like something we could see in a movie and not have leave him as this 2D illustration. So how do we do that? Well, um, this was originally a vector graphic, as you can kind of tell by the little lines here that happened when I imported him into Photoshop. So um, we bring him into Photoshop, turn him into a PNG or JPEG at 512 by 512 pixels. Now. We could leave the black background, but I also want that to just turn into a photo background that we can use in the end. So what I can do, easy way to turn this a different color is right click on the black layer, go into blending options and give it a color overlay, then just pick the color here. So uh, we get an instant preview, which is why I like use doing it this way instead of just filling with the color because then I have to pick the color, fill, check it, pick the color, fill, right? So with this, we get an instant preview over here. I think like a nice green might be good for him. Might be a good contrast. Dark green, something like that. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So, the reason I wanted such a detailed drawing is because if we're trying to use uh, Stable or AI for a professional purpose, right, our concept artist might have very specific uh, imagination, but very specific wishes, which might not remain if we have a rough sketch at first. So if I just kind of put something on my iPad, um, that could be all kinds of things. Do you hear that guy screaming in the background? If you hear people screaming in the background, um, it's currently still Oktoberfest here in Munich, so don't be surprised. That's where I got a flu. Uh, now, if we see here, this is interesting. So Steffi told me that this is um, this is supposed to be a candy cane fur. So that's going to be a challenge to do that I'd love to do with um, little lollipops sticking to it, which is interesting. This is his belly. So I think we might want to have that be like shorter fur of some kind with a little furry spiral in it, kind of lollipoppy as well. Um, some horns that could look like, oh, that would be funny. They, they remind me from the color they remind me of marshmallows, which which could be pretty silly if we have like marshmallow horns. I think we might do that. And then there's like some, you know, just classic troll ears and stuff here. So I think we can work with that. As usual, I save a copy on my computer, put that into a folder called iterations. The reason I do that is because we're just going to have a bunch of different pictures in here that we can just kind of toss in there. So I'm going to name it by the number, call it one. That's our first iteration. Quality 10 is just fine. And now we already go into stable diffusion. So we upload that image in here and we can start describing. So we're going to start with lower sampling steps just so we can get a bunch of images out, put the batch count at six. Denoising strength pretty low because we, especially now, we have a pretty detailed character already and we want to keep those details. Let's go even to 25 and see what happens. And uh, tell it a cute monster with candy cane fur, candy cane colored fur, marshmallow horns, 
and teeth. And now I've changed my, um, my stance with putting artist names into prompts, uh, especially since uh, Greg, Greg Gutkowski has been very, very uh, clear online that his name should not be used in prompts. I got to respect that, right? Like, it's one thing if you put an artist's name in there who died a long time ago, or one who's like ambivalent toward AI art or whatever, but stop using a guy's name who just really does not want to be used. It's that simple. He's expressed his wish. I'm going to respect it. So I'm not going to use a living artist names in this anymore. Personally, it's a personal preference. It's a moral question. You have to answer it for yourself. Uh, and I found it is honestly much more fun to try to reach your goal without putting in an artist name. Because artist names are kind of a shortcut um, for a style, a color, a type of composition, you know. So that can all be described by other prompts where we have to make more creative decisions. And therefore, I think it's more art. So if we want to establish that AI art is art, which I believe it is, be more creative about it. It's more difficult, yes. But that's the fun. So um, now I'm going to say children's movie, 3D render. And of course, at the beginning, let's do character art of and detailed good and let's see where that gets us here we go we're already getting a little 3d look he's fun it's fun that's funny Ooh, i like him he got a candy got candy cane horns Ooh, he's a little ugly interesting so let's look for different aspects we want right this guy's hands are pretty cool they're three-dimensional let's look for candy cane fur this all looks like ham This is the closest to candy cane fur. So I'm going to copy this, right click copy, paste it in here. And now we're going to mask, right? In Photoshop, I click this button here, I mask, and then I pick a brush. Now with masks, of course, we're working with grayscale values, white and black. Black puts a hole in the mask, right? It hides things if we draw black on here, and white shows things. And that's what I'm doing here when I mask, right? So I have the brush selected, it's on black. So if I paint black, it's going to put a hole that you can see down here into the mask and reveal what's under this layer. Another way we can imagine, I think if we alt click, you can see the mask. And then if we all click again, we're out of it. So that's another way to really look at the mask. Now what we want, of course, if I repaint it all white, is pretty much just the uh, candy cane fur. So we can invert the mask entirely so it's black immediately. So Im image, adjustments, invert. Now we can paint in white over where the fur is. and then see if anything else is good. I think the hands are, I'm gonna get the hands from elsewhere. The feet also. Okay, let's get the hands and feet. Hands from here. Mask, invert mask. It doesn't really matter, the feet are practically identical. The hands are just a little better. Do I like the face? Not really. He's a little more detailed. I like his face. The teeth. Yeah. Okay, actually, let's run it again. Turn up the sampling steps to 60. Denoising strength a little up and see what happens. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, look at them. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's a character we know from Pixar. That's a candy cane jacket right there. Oof, that's really creepy. Goodness me. Okay, but see, the, the fur is really cool. I don't know what happened to his belly. That is a um, crazed uh, circus director monster. But I like this. See, I really like the, the arms. So let's copy that. 
bring them over here. And again, image, invert the mask, and bring in the arms. That's fun. Still looks kind of like a winter jacket, interestingly. And I would like to have the lollipops returned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, duplicate this layer and bring them over top, mask that again, invert, and give myself a really small brush, right? And I'm going to make this a little transparent so we can still see and just kind of pop those lollipops back in. And we're going to do those a little more detailed later. It's important, you know, these are the details. But the candy cane fur itself is pretty neat. Okay, now we turn it back up. And you see we have some more lollipops in there. Now, what I've also noticed is that the background is much better here on this new render, so I'm going to fully bring that in as much as I can. The feet are a little creepy, though. I think I'm going to leave those out. And the horns are not something I want. Okay, let's see if any other elements are cool. The feet are cuter here. Oof. <laughs> the feet are very fuzzy here. Yeah, I think of all these options, these feet were the best. Okay, so that was a little much for me. I think we're going to turn the denoising strength down again. But uh, first we export this boy again. Call it iteration two. Bring them in. Neat. Okay, now let's get into the details, nitty-gritty. So we click that button, right? This one, oops. This crop button, edit button, crop, hold shift down to keep it a square. Right, that's the trick. And you want it to be a square because otherwise it's going to stretch. There's always going to be a square coming out here. So if this isn't a square, it's going to mess up your aspect ratio in the image, right? It's going to stretch whatever you have selected into a square, whether it's up or down. So you don't want that. And now character art of the belly of, and now what I'm thinking is a lot of actual monsters came out here, like really creepy creatures. Like those are bloody teeth. We don't want that. So the art of the character art of the belly of a cute creature, cute furry creature, The belly and feet of a cute furry creature with candy cane colored fur. Okay, and we can remove that. Children's animated movie, maybe 3D render detailed. I think that's two. Could be a British English difference, so I don't know. Everything else can remain the same. Nice. Look at that. He gave him like candy cane toes. That's funny. Oh, I don't know what's happening there. Like little candy is falling out. His toenails, that's so funny. I kind of like that. I think I'm going to send that through again. Candy cane colored fur. Okay, let's, let's um, click here, send to image to image. And, and feet. Okay, art of the feet. Let's focus more on the feet of a cute furry creature with candy cane toenails and give it a little more freedom. Okay. Okay. Yikes. Okay, that's just something else entirely. Oh, it didn't get creature. I misspelled creature. Whoopsie. Those are slippers. That's funny. That's funny. Those are like weird rollers, back rollers or something. Weird. 
Okay, okay, okay. Well, in that case, I'm just going to copy this here. You know, it's part of the part of the trip that we're not always going to get what we want. Bring it into Photoshop, turn the opacity, so the transparency down, so we can see what we're doing. Size it down and place it where it belongs. Yeah. There are plugins for Photoshop coming, um, or some of them are already out with Stable Diffusion. I don't know if they work for local installations yet, so let me know once they do or if they do already, because then, of course, we can do the, all of this right in Photoshop, but until then I have to do this little process, because I don't want to pay for a cloud service when I have a perfectly great um, GPU installed on this computer. Now we mask again, paint black everywhere, where we want the toes, where we don't want um, that image, of course, not where we do. And again, for those curious, this is what that mask looks like. Oops, now I'm painting directly in the picture. That doesn't matter because there is no picture there. And we turn the opacity back up and we have some toes that are a little hidden. Let me paint it a little over, make them more clear. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're weird, Some weird shoes. Oh, and I gotta save my Photoshop file, of course. Steffi Monster. Now, a little secret for all of you. This character will be a little more important around next year, and it may or may not have my voice. So, keep an eye out for that. Save a copy. And now, let's get to the head. The head is interesting, so we crop it down to the head. And character art of, I think we'll be fine if it's not just the face of, maybe the head of a cute furry creature with marshmallow horns. Furry troll. Let's do that. And teeth. Let's do cute eyes friendly to get it away from the monster because who knows if we do troll could be that it's like really creepy you know scandinavian trolls in the library so let's let's i don't know turn down denoising strength as well to not have it run amok <laughs> he looks like a little rabbit i like the ears though that's cool wow yeah the ears are nice it's kind of forgetting the furry that's a cool idea okay so despite some of these ears being really good, I'm going to take these. No, nope, hold on. Where are they? These ones, because they're furry. And I wanted to understand more fur. And it's I think because of the 3D render, it's like giving us weird gamey creatures. Like, look at that. That's like a 90s video game. Funny. Friendly worked. And the horns are pretty funny too. So let's put him in there. Mm -hmm. Mask, invert the mask and paint the ears in. I think we can turn up the opacity again. And I think I like my horns too. Let's check if their marshmallow horns are better elsewhere. They definitely look like candy. That's really funny. Yeah, let's get these horns. That's good. So let's erase these again. Make sure the ears are here. That's funny. Always make sure there's no hard edges because those do tend to stay. All right. Now, how about the face? kind of like that face actually it's furry we're gonna work on it more but um for now that's good now let's get this in here nice hair by the way 
and bring it in. Again, mask, invert. There's shortcuts for a lot of this. I just want you to see where I'm clicking so it doesn't all happen on the keyboard. And the hair is funny. I like that hair. Look at that. Do you like these eyes more? No, no, I do not. Okay. Good. Now save that as an iteration. Very Christmassy. It's the color scheme I picked. Bring that in here and um, let's give the face a little more freedom and emphasize the fur. So now uh, here in the settings, if you have this installation, if you don't, um, check the link in the description. It's no longer the offensively named 4chan guide. Um, it is now a cool site that uh, has removed all the uh, slurs that for some reason have become part of internet culture and um, replace them with some very friendly guides. So check that out. And um, then you'll have all these settings and you can actually emphasize things. So if you want the model to pay more attention to words you put in the prompt, uh, you can set it that the parentheses intensify that. Now if I can find that, add extended info, where are the yeah, use text to make model pay more attention to text and the corner brackets to make it pay less attention. So that's on for us, which means we can go here and put parentheses around furry, which is important. Uh, marshmallow horns is good. A cute and friendly furry troll with marshmallow horns and teeth. Children's animated movie, 3D rendered, detailed, cute eyes. Um... I think that's good. Cute big eyes. And turn the sampling steps up just because it's the face, you know, it's important. And the denoising strength up a little too. I just want to have a little bit more freedom. And now, of course, that we're doing details, I actually, in the next step, I'm going to resize the image while it's producing, generating more. Because, of course, we're going above 512 by 512 in different parts, right? We have little crops. So go to image, image size, and, you know, pick whatever you want. I suggest like 2048 is about the max I would go because that's massive and already bigger than probably what most of the parts are like. So that's about right. And in the meantime, <laughs> I love them. Oh, that's funny. Oh, Look at him. That's really high quality. Okay, awesome, awesome. Let's look at the other ones. More like pigs. Oh, he's funny. These could go straight into a movie. Look at that. Imagine imagine if you're an illustrator and you can use software to show, to like pitch a movie to people with like one hour of work. You can just put this right into a pitch booklet and get investors um, by yourself, if you have an idea, you know, this is such an amazing tool for creatives um, who, you know, think up stories like I do, you know, I write, I have concepts. And, you know, if I had had this tool when I sold my first scripts, it would have been easier, you know, um, I would have been able to convince people of my idea way, way earlier. So that's really neat. Just have immediate concept art. Right, because people criticize this tool, you know, it's going to make people lose their jobs. I don't think so. It's going to enable so many creatives to do the first step of pitching, you know, getting money for their creative projects. It's going to be easier to convince investors. And then they can hire bigger teams, you know, get actual artists on board that can do the detail work. Of course, it's necessary. No one's going to, you know, no AI is going to do that for a long, long time and really get every detail right. So um, this is a good step. Good uh, good development, I think, for art. Look at him. That's so funny. Now, before we lose the whole concept, I'm going to copy my original troll here and put him on the very top. <laughs> I'd say it's still pretty close. Like, the expression is 
super goofy and the teeth are weird. Okay, I'll admit it. The teeth are weird. Let me see if I got better teeth. Um, they're kind of scary. I mean, he's kind of got... Let, let's try these. Copy them. Bring him in here. And... Line, mask, invert mask. And now we have to kind of mask it in here because, you know, he he does have more fur in this one here. So going to make sure to keep the style. Mm, the nose is different too. That's funny. That's a funny mouth. Okay, okay, okay. I think he's kind of keeping his expression, though. I like that. I'm going to turn my hardness of the brush down. Go more into detail work. Now, with these characters, it's much easier to notice mistakes, right? Like I'd say, this is this is very rough. It's harder to do the details with a big concept work if you're like generating a city, like I did in my last video. Um, it's easier to excuse mistakes and roughness, but here this is obviously still really rough. I mean, look at all this, right? So I'm going to save a copy iteration. It's going to be a final step. It's going to be very important to really clean this up. And now let's get the belly. That's like the last part. That's still super, um, super original. Nope, hold on. I do that again. Messed up holding the shift. Select the belly. Character art of the mm, belly. The furry belly of a cute creature. Let's just do creature. Cute creature. A furry spiral. Let's see what that does. We can turn down the sampling steps a little. I think it's not as important. Let's do batch count four. Denoising strength is good. <laughs> oh boy, it's really not getting the style at all. There's like dogs in here. What on earth? I guess the denoising strength was up a little too high. Of a furry belly. Let's maybe lose the spiral just completely. Of a cute creature. It's like eyes. I guess it doesn't like creatures. A furry bear's belly. And turn up the CFG scale just to see. You know, keep it closer to the prompt. Now that's that's really curious. I'm really having trouble with this belly. You know, it's shiny. It's not understanding that the spiral is um, supposed to be fur. And honestly, I mean, I'm just interpreting that, right? So I don't know either. Um, what I am going to do about this is I'm going to just take one of these. This one looks natural because it has some wavy lines. I'm going to put it in. And I will noise it up. I will give it, make it harder to recognize as a spiral. You know, make it look more furry, make it blurry. And hope that that will make stable figure out better what it is that it's supposed to be fur. I can also, you know, use the um, kind of the smudge tool as well. So if I like use the smudge tool, make it a good size, decent size, and really just kind of, of course, not in the mask, but on the actual image, just kind of pull it around, right? I can make it look furrier. I hope like that might that might do it. Right, doesn't that already look kind of furry? I don't want that big thing in there. I am getting grinned at through a glass door. It's very distracting because it's a very pretty person.
All right. Now let's bring iteration six in here. And see if it can recognize fur. And if it doesn't, we'll add some noise. <laughs> Steffi, what have you done? What, what? It tasks me. It tasks me. All right. All right. Okay. Last try. We're going to give this a ton of noise. Just add noise like crazy. Really give Stable a hard time. of a furry animal. Let's just do animal. Oh, it's adding eyes. My God, I forgot the eyes. Okay, but still, that was not the problem. And turn the CFG scale back down to seven. I don't know if that really helped. Ah! Ooh. Let's do of fur. Okay. 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 That's better. That's better. Let's um, send this back into image to image and just uh, just run it again. Just run it again and see what happens. Turn the denoising strength down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It it looks too organic to me now, doesn't it? It's like it's very real. This guy has a has a real belly now and it's a little creepy, but you know, let's put it in, see what happens. Okay, mask that and Yeah, I mean Sure, I guess. But you can really see this is kind of the thing, right? Where something that looks great illustrated isn't necessarily good in 3D, right? Like I'm sure that at Pixar, when they come up with concepts, they um, often have cases where something that looks great in the art really doesn't translate. So in this case, in this this belly, I I don't know. It's It's... It's like open, it has a little trypophobia. I don't know exactly what it is. I guess it's like a Pokemon. There's that Pokemon with the... Um, uh, Pokemon fans, comment please. Which one am I talking about? The one with the spiral belly, the little tadpole. This is embarrassing. I played so much Pokemon, but okay. And I'm going to adjust it a little. Maybe levels. Um, make it look a little friendly, not quite as dark and creepy. Okay, and now um, we're going to go for the lollipop. So I don't really need to export a new um, iteration. I think we have all the details we need in the old one. And I'm going to uh, crop it down to, you know, general areas with lollipops. Character art of fur covered in lollipops. Colorful lollipops. Turn the denoising strength. Yeah, like 35 is good. And uh, we're just going to mask out the lollipops no matter how they come out. So that's all I'm going for in this step. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's creepy. Ooh, it's like finding eyes in it. Okay, let's do covered in colorful candy drops. Let's do candy drops. Mm-hmm. Better, better, better. These are cool. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to send those right in again. Look at that. It's like M&Ms and stuff now. Yeah, that's cool. I like the I like the M&Ms aspect of it. This looks kind of candy-like. Okay, good. I'm going to copy that, bring that in here. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to give it another chance. Covered in colorful, swirly lollipops see what happens just in case it gives me something better
and again, invert. And the hardness up, scale down a little. It's kind of the cool thing about stable. It really puts everything in the right spot. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? It did kind of, it's not like clearly lollipops, but it's candy for sure. Yeah, I like that better. Doesn't look like it could be like beads or something. It's really just uh, clearly candy in, of some kind. Invert and paint over. Oh, these are really different. I think I moved it to the wrong place. Nice, nice. Okay, great. So in that case, I can just leave the prompt because that seems to be working and move it over to the other arm. Maybe we can get this whole area even. Ooh, different styles. Just going to do that again. Again with the trypophobia, something really doesn't like me today. Ooh, this all looks like a little sickness. <laughs> uh, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to try this one. There's a couple good ones there. And control I inverts, just to have one of the key combinations in there. No, that's the whole. Ew. The rest was decent. Oh, that looks awful. I'm sorry. Ugh. Okay, okay, good. And now all the details, right? Like this is all just still kind of rough. The head, you know, he's missing kind of some, some detail. I think part of his beard is missing, right? There could be a ton more here. Um that I could add, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint it in, and there's like part of it here. A lot of the original illustration is still peeking through. So what I'm going to do now, once I've added, fixed all these masks here, is I'm going to export this whole thing as another iteration and send it through. But first, let's get the jacket here going. Where's like the original, I think this one, could use some more detail. Everything that was below, right? All the iterations. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's um, do some more stuff. I also noticed the teeth aren't pointy enough. So I'm going to want to uh, draw those in here. And I'm going to do it with the clone tool. Just classic, you know, pick a clone tool. Alt. And just kind of paint it in. You can also change the align, like click off the aligned to um, not have it always start at the same spot, right? If I let go, it starts back at the beginning rather than where I went, which is cool. And now if only I could pay attention to um, what I'm actually painting here rather than just talking to you, would be uh, would be nice. Yeah, painted. If just, you know, make it pointy. There's something above it, isn't there? Yeah, I think. I feel like there's something over. Yeah. Sample all layers, maybe? There's something over it. Okay, I'm going to make a new layer and then sample all layers and paint it on. Put that layer at the very top. That would be smart. This is a mess, but that's what I, why I love working with AI because it doesn't really matter all that much. 
it does help to have some basic Photoshop skills. Yep. Okay. What iteration is this even? This is eight already. Okay, great. Let's do that. And do one round for the teeth. Just teeth individually, right? Get just them. Character art of a cute creature's tusk. Is that a tusk? Yeah. In his blue furry mouth. Sure. We've got to turn the denoising strength way down for this one, I think. And just see where it takes us. Okay, okay, okay. It's getting us there. I'm going to turn up the denoising a little bit, just so it can have more freedom. Give it 80 sampling steps. Nice, I like the furry detail here. Okay, good. I'm going to take this tooth. Even got the nose. Nice. Gave us some new detail here. All right. And as per usual, I'm going to leave a little bit of the furry face because that was cool. I like that edge detail. Mm hmm. Okay, and do the exact same thing on the other side. I mean, I suppose style-wise, I'm going to have to go with this one and just, you know, pick that corner there. That's creepy. His nose has a face, but that doesn't matter. And, yeah, pretty much all I need from this one is that little corner. So, again, invert. It's a little lopsided now, his face, but that's kind of cute, actually. I like that. <laughs> I mean, we can turn it, bring it over a little bit. Good. Okay, now on to the last few steps. I see a little bit here, a little bit of a mess with the candy. It's kind of icky, but uh, let's save a final iteration. Final, sure, final, final. Come on, Albert, you're a professional. You know that this is not going to be the final one. And bring it in here. And generally describe it, right? Character art of a cute, furry creature. Children's animated movie. 3D render, detailed. Um, furry creature standing in a green... Room. Let's just go room. Sampling steps. Let's go. Let's go one one thirty. Come on, one thirty. Give it real, real pizzazz. And batch count this. Uh -huh. Denoising strength. And we're gonna bring that down to around thirty five because we're gonna use this only for some details, right? Like the edges of everything to make sure the room looks good and everything. So um, let's see what happens. Good, good, good. Now, these look awful if you think about it, right? I mean, obviously. But what I'm looking for is just general, general coherence. So this one's nice because, you know, there's a little bit of a vignette in the studio. It looks like a photo studio, so I like that. This one's kind of boring. This one has the floor, right? This is a good floor. First one is, yeah, I prefer this one. This is my favorite, so I'm going to copy this one. And, um... Paste it in here, and actually, never mind, do one more thing. I'm going to send this to extras, and extras resizes it. I want to resize this to four times the size with the real ESR again, 4X plus upscaler, so I have full quality. 
generate. It's going to be pretty quick compared to generating of pictures, right? And now I'm going to save this, bring it in here, and mask, put it on the very top. And now I'm just going to um, paint white back in, uh, black, nonsense, paint a hole in it, of course, of where I want my old creation to poke through, which is, of course, most of it except for the background. Right, so the marshmallow, horns, and the ears. But you can already tell, right, the background is fixed, and a lot of the details are. So all I want is to paint back in the parts that I know look good, like the hands, right? The arms generally were pretty good. But everything else, the transition to different parts are all fixed now, thanks to that final step. It looks much cleaner, and I'll show you proof in just a second. Because if we turn this off, it's messy, right? Do you see what I mean? And this is pretty much what I wanted. His hair is a little lower, so we can go in and do some more simple edits and stuff. But generally, you know, remember what we started with? If I put in my preview, my original guy, this is the original sketch. And from this, we got a fully 3D render, basically. Something that looks like a 3D render in um, an hour of work. So this could be put into concept books it's to get investors for cartoons or, you know, illustrated children's book. If you're just the writer or just an illustrator, the possibilities are endless. And um, I'm so glad I get to introduce these techniques to you because uh, it's so fun. And I just feel like my imagination can really run wild with this new technology. But of course, you've stuck around to the end. And at the beginning, I promised you a little surprise from Steffi if I did. And here it is. If you're in the EU, England, Norway, Switzerland, or Liechtenstein, you get a 15% off coupon code on her website. So if you love her work, um, like I do, Pummel Einhorn, all these cool illustrations, they have basically every product you can imagine, like cups, t-shirts, stuffed animals, whatever. You can get 15% off with the code soft unicorn. So if you enter a soft unicorn and buy at least five euros of uh, things, you get 15% off until the um, 31st of December this year. So this is not a paid advertisement. I just want to support Steffi because she supported me with her lovely illustration. And uh, if you want to thank her as well, go ahead and buy something from her site. I'm sure you'll find a product for every taste. I um, Even I, who really don't look like a person who would wear this stuff, um, have like my favorite hat is from them. So uh, great quality stuff. Go ahead and support Steffi. Now, as a final step, you could, of course, clean this up a little more, you know, fix the hair and stuff, and then put it into the upscaler like I just showed you in the extras of your stable diffusion installation. Generally, I, as usual, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and um, feel free to, as many of you did, Leave a comment with wishes for what you want my videos to be like in the future. Leave a subscription. That's the best thing you can do for me right now. 6,000 of you already did, and you left 200,000 views in the past four weeks. So I am so excited about this and very glad that I can support you with Stable Diffusion. I'm Albert Bosazan, and I hope to see you soon in my next video.